Hey there guys, I just wanted to talk real quick about this Red Deck Wins deck. Now I know I talked about it quite a bit in the article there, but I still wanted to give it a nice little introduction here. This is the list that has kind of almost solidified its place. In the past month or two, um, this has been the most common list. We have seen in the past, prior to this, a whole situation where anyone would bring whatever Red Deck Wins kind of mishmash of spells that worked for him. But this one seems to be, I guess, the most consistent. It has gotten the most player base behind it. Now, the deck is pretty straightforward. You're running a full set here of burn spells that do three damage for one mana. This includes Chain Lightning, Lava Spike, and Lightning Bolt. You also get a full set of Rift Bolt here. And Rift Bolt can be kind of the same uh, situation where you get one mana cost if you decide to suspend it until the next turn, which is something you're going to do in, in most cases. So you get a really kind of fast burn advantage, and this deck can finish you off as early as turn 3 with the right draw. Uh, some of the other spells include Fire Blast, which is going to do 4 damage at the cost of sacrificing 2 mountains. Usually you don't want to find yourself in a situation where it's a mid-game and you're actually going to have 6 mana. If you're at the point where you have 6 mana on the table, odds are the game is not going well for you, so that is not you know a situation you want to find yourself in. Uh, but it is nice because you can, you know, tap out those two lands, do six damage off of, say, two lightning bolts, and then use the fire blast for ten in one turn. You also get a full set of stagger shocks, which does a total of four damage for a cost of three, which is a little bit heavy, but the rebound kind of acts as card advantage in the fact that you get to use this spell twice. It basically kind of increases the number of spells in the deck. It's like running a, a set of eight shocks in one set of cards for, I guess, a heavier cost. But you get you get what I'm saying. The deck's also running a set of Incinerates, uh, up to three, and then a full set of Searing Blazes of four. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Searing Blaze. We'll pull this one aside and we'll take a look at this card. If you see, it does one damage to target player and one damage to a creature that player controls. Now, this does mean that you do have to target a creature, so if you're playing something like Storm or an opponent that is not running much of a creature base, then you cannot cast the spell unless there is a creature on the table. Another drawback is that in order to get it to do the full 3 damage, you have to play a land to activate that landfall mechanic. Um, now, this is kind of doable because Popper is a format that is a little bit creature heavy. Even our control decks like Delver Blue are going to be sitting on quite a few creatures. So, odds are you can get that off, but if you find yourself in Storm, it'll be definitely something you sideboard out. I, I'm not a huge fan. I guess I personally would favor something that ran, say, a set of four incinerates over a full set of searing blazes, um, but I guess that's down to personal preference. This is still kind of the, the core that you will see, um, though this is a little bit slightly different. Anyways, um, Kelder Marauders and Kiln Fiends make up the only creatures in the deck. The Kelder Marauder is a nice five damage if it is, manages to attack unblocked. Uh, even if it doesn't, it's still going to act as a shock spell for two, so that's kind of nice. Gives you a little bit of block ability as well. Um, as long as blockability is a word. Anyways, Kiln Fiend is another fast card. If you get that in on turn two, um, when you attack with it on turn three, you have the potential, assuming you hit all your mana drops, and cast three of your one cost three damage spells um, to do pretty much turns worth of damage. Let's see if I can attempt the math. So you're going to say three lightning bolts, uh, which can do up to nine damage on one turn. When you're attacking with the Kiln Fiend, the 1 will be 10, and then 3 times 9 again is... I'm sorry, 3 times 3 again is 9. So you would do 20 damage in one turn. Just about 20 damage in one turn off the Kiln Fiend. Um, I'm pretty sure it's 19. But anyways, uh, math is not my strong suit. That's why I am here. So the mana base is a little bit heavy here in this deck. It runs 21 lands. Most run upwards of 19, and that's kind of the, the ceiling. Uh, the deck does run a full set of Forgotten Caves, however, and these are going to be used most of the time as card draw. You want to be able to cycle these. If you find yourself in a situation where you are required to play these in order to get lands, you're not going to be pretty well off. It's going to slow you down significantly because of the fact that these lands come into play tapped. Now, I don't want to talk a lot about the sideboard. There is a sideboard for this deck you can see in the article there. But what I really want to focus on instead is kind of what makes red deck wins tick. I want to kind of just see what the tempo is like in the deck and see what we can or cannot change out, what potential there might be for certain other cards to make an appearance. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this here, I'm going to add in a couple of um, decks, and I might even do live gameplays, just because of the fact that these should be relatively quick, um, and we'll see how these work out. I'm not sure how many you'll get, but 
I guess we'll both be surprised, won't we? All right, guys, we're working into our first game here. Opening hand, good, not great. Uh, two lands available to us. We're probably still going to keep it, however, it does suck that one is a cave because that means it's going to come into play tapped and it's going to slow us down a turn. Uh, means we can't get that turn one Rift Bolt into play. All right, Karen Feeder goes down. That's going to tell us that it's probably going to be Tortured Existence. Uh, I'm going to start out with that cave, get it untapped as soon as possible. Uh, Tortured can be kind of a an easy game, I think, personally, because it does take them a little while to... Oh, no, this isn't... Okay, this isn't going to be Tortured. This is going to end up being... Um, the other one. What did I call this? I used to call it discard aggro. Someone told me the correct name for it. I don't remember what it was. Uh, what it is going to tell us though is it is going to be a heavy creature base. So I really don't want to play Kiln Fiend. Um, Kiln Fiend's going to have a hard time getting through. So we're going to just we're going to suspend these rift bolts. Um, we're going to spend most of our energy here. We're going to devote all our spells to targeting down an opponent as opposed to trying to kill off creatures, especially when you're running those cryo contritions. If I try and kill off that feeder, it's going to do, um, going to cause me to discard, and he can actually trigger that whenever. I'm going to actually keep the Kiln Fiend in hand as discard fodder, uh, which, which I will throw out to this rat. So these are going to... I wonder if this is going to require math. I did not consider that when I thought about writing this article series. So we're going to do three to the face there. This one's going to resolve. We're going to do another three to the face. Let's see what we draw here. Excellent. So what we can actually do here is not only empty our hand, that'll protect us from discard. I'm going to suspend this next. Lightning bolt. Cool. So we've just emptied our hand, but he is down to eight. This rift bolt will drop him down to five. We are up to turn four now. Now his discard is going to have a little impact. Hopefully, we draw into something that is not going to be lands, because lands here are going to stall us out big time. We're kind of in that top deck mode right now and hoping to find some quick burn spells. Alright, Fire Blast is great. I don't want to cast that right away. Because it is going to require me to sacrifice these mountains. And given the opportunity, I would like to use that mana for a Stagger Shock if it comes up. Um, so what I was going to do there is I was going to hold this mana available until this 4 damage would finish off my opponent. Um, because he is going to force me to discard here, I am now going to use this and sacrifice mountains to cast that. Um... When you're in top deck mode, if you have to sacrifice lands like that, it's going to put you at a bit of a disadvantage because now if we draw into something like Searing Blaze or even the um, Stagger Shock, we're going to be unable to cast that to finish off an opponent because we will be a land short. So the only way we can uh, top deck into the win here is if we get a direct damage spell that falls in that one casting cost slot. Odds of that happening are actually pretty good, I mean, because we are running so many of them. But we are down to 10 life now, and it is a race against the clock. And this is not good, because we did hit into Kiln Fiend. Um, even the Kiln Fiend's going to suck. It's fine if he wants to do this. Um, Keldon Marauders is also going to suck at this situation, because we're down to one land. We really we have to top deck into a Lightning Bolt, a Lava Spike, a Chain Lightning, um, or I guess even Rift Bolt at this point in time um, to win this game because if we don't he's got that dragger in his graveyard he can simply uh, unearth that for the win and we do top deck for that excellent there we go target player okay excellent so that worked out in our favor but it's really really shady when you get into that top deck mode down to one land that that's even worse if we were at two lands we would be okay a little bit more on top deck mode because we would have um, available to us the option for Keldon Marauder to finish him off or even the the Stagger Shock. Um, I'm not not Stagger Shock, the Searing Blaze. He did have creature base. So uh, let's get into another game, shall we? Okay guys, we are in the second game here. 
Opening hand is, again, pretty good. We hit the two lands that we need. It's kind of the ideal place I like to be is at two lands, um, no more, no less. Uh, so I will not mulligan. We will have a chance here for a turn one Rift Bolt, which I think is definitely the right play over something like a Lightning Bolt, since it does take that an extra turn before it can actually come into play. Let's see. We also get Keldon Marauders, which will be good on turn two. Oh, no. Um, Irrigation Ditch is going to tip us off that this is going to be a... Uh, storm deck so we need to searing blaze is going to be useless to us and we're going to need to get this going fast um as much as i usually my game plan is with a land like forgotten caves that comes into play tapped i like to get that in as soon as possible because then it gives me a chance to get that untapped but that's usually my plan for a game um and a deck that usually likes a mid-range i'm sorry a mid game to late game so what I want to do is instead kind of hold that and hope that I draw into a better land um, and take the opportunity to cycle that. I really don't need the land. I'm not at a point in time where it's going to be oh, drew another one uh, required for me to do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put Marauders down. It'll be some fast damage. He's not going to have creatures to block, so I want to get that going. Um, but like I said, I want to use these later for card draw because two mana is a pretty good position. It's a place I can manage very well. I think we're doing okay here because of the fact that he doesn't have that second land yet. Usually they're going to need at least a second land to get that through, but now we know that our Kelda Marauder is going to get that full five damage, which is awesome. All right, what's the play here? Searing Blaze is still useless to me. I have Stagger Shock now. Kind of makes me want to play a Forgotten Cave so I can ensure that I get this going next turn at the very latest. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a cave into play. I'm going to lightning bolt to the face and then cycle this other cave. And hope I don't see a mountain because that'll... Ah, uh, I did. Damn it, I could have held on to that cave. Alright, maybe a little over anxious there. I could have, I guess, incinerated and hoped to top deck into it. But I was hoping that, that by doing this play I would be able to do stagger shock and draw onto something else off of that cave. So... Does he have another land? If he doesn't, it's still not game over, but it's it's very unusual. We're now on turn four, and if Storm hasn't won by turn four, it's usually a bad place. Okay, it looks like he's going to, at the very least, attempt to go off here. Kind of a hard spot for him running these uh, in invasion lands, because if he is running another version of this deck, he can use things like Mana Morph to uh, draw into a land that he can play and get extra mana off of. This is also the, the Teps version that he's running Sign and Blood, so he's going to do a little bit of self-damage, which is only going to help me out. Um, but it really comes down to this point in time right now where it's kind of wait and see whether or not he actually has it. Whether or not he can finish us off as fast as this deck can possibly be. Um, that does require it to have a handful of the one-cost spells, and we kind of got a little slowed down by Searing Blaze being unplayable, and Incinerate is at that two-cost. So actually several times, oh, another sign of blood is good for us. That means if he storms and cannot finish me off, yeah, that would have been game over. If he stormed and was unable to finish us off, especially if it was Warren's, that would be game over in our favor because then we could have Searing Blazed uh, for three and Incinerate to finish him off off that fourth mana base. Um, he was taking one to this, so he'd be down to five. Um, Stagger Shock would have done four. We were in a pretty good spot there. Uh, I guess he just... I don't know, misplayed on something, didn't draw into what he needed, and we ended up taking that one. Bit of a, a lucky go on ours, um, but let's check out another game. Okay, guys, game number three, um, and I feel like I'm going to do five. I usually like to do three, uh, but because these are really fast, I'm probably going to take it out to five. Opening hand is, okay, we have three lands, which is a bit much, um, but we will not mulligan. We're going to be able to get an early play onto Rift Bolt with a turn two Marauder. Going to hold off this cave. Like I said last game, I like to sit around that position of about two mana. Um, this is kind of my, my ideal place to be. So I'm going to be able to sit on two mana for a little while, see if we can't draw into a third land, maybe to cycle that off. Three is, is maybe the maximum um, I like to have, unless you've got a fire, um, unless you need to, to sacrifice those, those lands, the mountains, to, to get some extra damage through. But we will see what is going on here. Turn one play, this will tell us. Oh, Hexproof. That is bad news bears. Um, 
if you see turn one forest tap then uh, you have three choices it's going to either be stompy it's going to be infect or it's going to be hexproof stompy will be a tough matchup because it is creature based but it is relatively fast creature based and so they will probably be able to race you in most cases infect might be a decent matchup because you can hopefully burn out the first creature or two um, when they tap themselves out to play it and try and get beyond the uh, vines of asswood hexproof is i don't know i honestly haven't played enough of it to really get an idea i imagine it, it might be a little bit tough we're going to be unable to target our, our searing blazes are going to be useless so having that in hand is very bad um, it's going to be just a wasted spell. We're going to be able to attack into it, thankfully, this turn, and see if he maybe wants to block the Marauder, or if he wants to take the three. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to start out to attack first. We have no way to interact with his creatures because they are hexproof. Um, so we're going to attack first. The only way we're going to get rid of these creatures is going to be if he decides to actually take the time to block them, which he does not. Alright, so we're going to do mountain, cycle the cave, see what we can find. Crap, another mountain. Um, Alright, we gotta go fast here. We're gonna suspend this rift bolt and hit him for another three. This is bad because we've got a real slow draw here. We've hit into five lands. Um, while one was a forgotten cave and did allow us to draw a land, um, we still drew into a land. So that doesn't help us out. And Syrian Blaze, like I said, is going to be a dead card unless for some odd reason Oh, I think the deck, like I said, I haven't played enough with this deck. I'm not as familiar with it, though I know it has become a real thing since the armor has been printed. Um, but I think a couple of them run Aura Narlid, which would be awesome to see, because while we wouldn't be able to kill it, we'd still be able to do that 3 damage to the opponent. So at the beginning of next turn, after the Marauder dies and the Rift Bolt hits, he's going to be down to 6. If he gets an Aura Narlid in the play, that would be excellent for us because we can get Searing Blaze, we'll dress, drop him to 3, and then hopefully we can top deck into a finisher. Come on, show me Narlid. Really want to see Narlid. Uh, more Treetop Razors. Okay. Alright. I don't know why he didn't attack with that, that's what I thought can't be blocked except by creatures with flying, so I don't know why he didn't attack with that last turn. I think, honestly, our best situation here is going to be that he gets a Gnarlid, and we can play the Searing Blaze, because otherwise we're going to be in really, really bad top deck mode. Ah, oh, excellent, Lightning Bolt. Alright, put this mountain down. Oh, I should have held on to that. Okay, that was a bit of a misplay there. Um, too eager and thinking about that. The what we need for Searing Blaze to do three, and I, I forget this sometimes because I run the, the textless copy, but what we need to do for three damage off Searing Blaze is landfall. So we should have kept that mountain in hand so we could get that landfall. Um, armor did come down, so he's going to swing for nine off this Glade Cover um, scout. Which means that uh, worst top deck ever. Okay, so this game is over. We needed to top deck, I was going to say, into Lava Spike, Lightning Bolt would have done it, Fire Blast would have done it, and we got into Searing Blaze, which is terrible because of that Hexproof, so we are going to concede this game and show them our hand because that is just bad luck. Um, these did end up being dead cards, and out of all the options we had, that was not one we needed. So I think we are going to do five games here. Um, we'll get to the next one real quick. Okay, guys, fourth game. Hello and good luck. So that last one was a, a bit of a heartbreaker. Oh no. Okay, so this is an interesting opening hand. Um, we're on the draw here, so I think I'm going to keep it, but we are sitting on only one land, and I think the only reason I'm going to keep it is because we have four spells in our hand that can be played for a single mana. So I am not going to mulligan. Uh, like I said, usually a safe place to be is around two. That would allow us a situation where we could play Searing Blaze. And this is going to be Goblins. Uh, I'm going to start out with Rift Bolt. Another tricky one because goblins can be quite fast, like Stompy. Um, even actually, I'm guessing a little bit faster. So we may have to look to deal some extra damage to creatures here that we may not have wanted to at first. I think some of the ideal targets are 
the sledder obviously has to go. Um, I think I'm going to start off, I'm going to do damage to him and hope for a mountain for Searing Blaze on the sledder. The, the sledder has to go because of crap, um, because of the fact that it gets bigger. Some of the things that you don't need to worry about first, I mean, as far as priorities go, are these ones that can't attack unless they cast a spell. He's only down to four cards in hand. He did have to mulligan, I think. Oh, I'm not going to do the math. No, he didn't have to mulligan. Um, anyways, so you got to... Did he? See, now this is going to kill me. you got to just be aware of how fast he can dump his hand. No, he kept his hand. Um, how fast he can kept... Uh, how fast he can dump his hand. Uh, you also have to be aware of the fact that he can copy Chain Lightning here to finish us off. So what I'm going to do is suspend this Rift Bolt and pass the turn. Still trying to find the Searing Blaze to target down that Sledder. Um, if I don't get it, the mountain I need next turn, I will then take care of the Sledder. He's going to Lightning Bolt, yeah. Shit. Alright. This will be an interesting race. Bushwhacker, okay. I think I'm going to have to be a little bit more aggressive in my creature killing. Because I'm going to go down here by 7. Might be an opportunity to cast Chain Lightning as well because of the fact that he is tapped out to the point where he can't replicate that and deal it back to me. So if I don't get a land here, I will Chain Lightning the Sledder, I think. If I do get a land, I will Searing Blaze with the Sledder. And still hope for a turn where I can try and cast that Chain Lightning without him replicating it. Excellent mountain. So we will Searing Blaze. Which is great. Finally get rid of that Sledder. Lightning Bolt. Oh, Death Spark. Even worse. Because now he's going to have an opportunity to manipulate his library a bit. So he goes down to 11. I am at 7. He's going to get Death Spark back. Let's see what he's got here. So we know one of the two cards in his hand is Death Spark. Ooh. Works out in my favor that that was a land. It means he is a little flooded, and it's going to put me in a pretty good situation. So let's do some math here. Um. I can do 6 to the head, we'll drop him to 5, and then Fire Blast is going to put me 1 short. I know he has Death Spark in hand. I think I still need to get rid of that Goblin Cohort just, just in case he does get a creature in. He's going to Death Spark and get it back. I understand that. Um, wait a minute. Yeah, it doesn't matter if I kill another one. Sorry, I haven't played Goblins in a while. Uh, Lava Spike to the face. And then... Let's see how it goes. Let's see what we top deck into next turn. He's going to be able to do, at the very most, two off of the Bushwhacker and Death Spark next turn. Hopefully that one card in his hand is another mountain. Let's see what he drew into. Oh, another mountain. So he is a little mana flooded. That is going to work out in our favor. We're getting a little lucky here. I really want to see a lightning bolt here. Oh, no, not his. Ah, uh, shit. All right, what was the next card? Marauders. Okay, that wouldn't have helped us out. So next turn, I would have been able to do three to him. It would have been game over anyways. He would have chain lightning back. But three to him would have taken him down to five. Um, and then Fire Blast. Wolfie we'll Chain Lightning back. No, it still would have been game if I didn't get a Lightning Bolt there. No, you know what? Even if I got the Lightning Bolt, it probably still would have been game. All right, so we got outraced. Uh, I'm not sure I could have been any more aggressive on the creatures. Maybe I should have gotten rid of the Sledder a little bit earlier. That was definitely a, our game to lose because of the fact that he got so land flooded, but that's okay, we'll take it in stride and we'll, we'll jump into the last game. Alright guys, so fifth game, opening hand. Ugh. 
it's okay. We have three lands, which is a little bit much, but I think I'm still going to hold on to it because we got a, a little bit of efficient burn, some creature control off the blaze, and then fire blast early on. So we will take a chance. Usually around two lands is the ideal spot. I know I've said it several times, but... Three is not terrible as long as you do not draw into anything more. Looks like our opponent is going to be playing a little slow. Ah, Cloud Post. I was hoping to come across this so I could see how this goes. A little concerned about how this matchup would go with all the life gain off of... Alright, Marauder is going to go down. All the life gain off of the Glimmer Posts. Also to mention the fact that most Is It Post decks do not run a heavy creature package. They run some creatures, but not a lot, which means that you don't have a lot of targets for Searing Blaze. And this time, for once, I'm going to hold on to this land until there's an opportunity to play this Searing Blaze, or I absolutely need that third land for something like, say, Stagger Shock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright. Nervous. I feel nervous. But we are going to be able to swing through for 5 on the Kiln, or Kiln Marauder, draw it into a Kiln Fiend, which we will play, because that will be a fantastic next turn. Assuming that lives, we'll get 1 damage off the Marauder, and we'll be able to, at the very least, Chain Lightning and Fire Blast would be 6, 7, plus, ooh, there's the life gain, 8. 14? Be 14 damage? Is that true? I think it would be 14. I really kind of hate, I didn't realize how much math I would have to do for this. Totally not my strong suit. Okay. So, he is at 14. Chain Lightning would bring him to 11. Fire Blast would reduce him to... 7, 1 off Kiln Fiend's base is 6, plus the 6 from the trigger, so I think I have this 1, as long as he doesn't have like a Vapor Snag, and that's not something you're likely to see in Is It Post. Um, I'm assuming he had this 2 mana available for um, the Expedition map. If this is his post, I haven't seen his second color. It could very well be Demir post. Um, and even then, he, well, no, he could absolute... Um, if he, he gets that through the prism, he could still... Alright, we'll attack through. We gotta, I think we have to go kind of all in on this anyways. If he has the kill spell, good for him. If he doesn't, it's game over. But I'm assuming he's playing Is It Post because it is the more popular of the two. Yep. All right, excellent. What a way to end it. So Glimmer Post did gain him some life, but because we were able to win so early, it is turn four here. Um, we were really able to pull this together. So final thoughts on the deck. Let's just pop it open real quick. Um, okay, so I think you see a lot of the things that I'm going to address as far as concerns and whatnot. The deck is really fast. So I guess what this this really comes down to is this is a fantastic deck. If you're that kind of person that you want the games to be over fast, win or lose. Uh, when we won, they won fast. When we lost, we lost fast. Um, I can definitely see where Searing Blaze, again, just kind of reinforced my, con reinforced my concerns over that. Um, but what we're going to do next is you read a little further down here, and we will check out that second video, and we will look at my next iteration. We're going to try something, go a little to one extreme, and see what we can do to maybe alter this deck.